In our last vlog, I showed you guys preparing for our backpack trip this weekend. Okay, so I brought everything inside. I haven't opened it yet. Andy kind of took it out of the boxes yesterday, except for this one here. Okay, let's see if I can get this back in the bag now. That always seems to be the problem. I don't know, this is too complicated. But this here is the only footage that I got. Morning, beautiful people coming to you live from the great outdoors. <laughs> that was so lame. Um, we just started our first 0.1 of a mile doing our Art Lobe trail hike. 30 miles, three days. I already feel like I'm gonna die with this bag. I just feel like something's not sitting right. I messed with it a lot yesterday, but it's still a million miles an hour while I'm over here dying. I'm also recording on my phone, so hopefully it all comes out good. I know sometimes the sound is a little quiet, but this is going to be interesting. Poor Mac got bit by a copperhead and we about freaked out. Luckily, Andy and my dad were very, very quick to respond. And I mean, you want to tell them? As soon as we sat down, he started sniffing around and then he- um, Right off the trail. Right off the trail, we sat down and not even like two feet away from where we were sitting, he puts his nose down and he got hit by this little copperhead. And um, like within seconds, I was squeezing it out and he's squirming and he's yelping and he's hopping around and then maybe like another 50 yards around the trail where we couldn't see there were these two guys that were leapfrogging us every you know every break and he heard us and he had a map yeah and we were so grateful i think that they found us and on top of that we happened to have service at that point on the trail it's like eight or nine miles out <laughs> yeah so while i'm like almost in tears thinking he's going to die instantly like i don't know how poisonous snake bite bites work i don't know if we said it, it was a copperhead um literally right off the trail and i'm thinking he's gonna die on this trail like what like we were eight miles in at this point and Either we were thinking, okay, we have to hike back until we saw these guys. Eight or nine miles, I don't know if he would have done it. And then another two hours to get some, you know, medical help. Yeah, would, so luckily work. those guys were able to call 911, who connected us to the park rangers, who came. They came out in their cars, their SUVs. Four wheelers. And ATVs, yeah. So that whole process, even though they were quick, we were pretty far out, like I said. So it took them 20 minutes to get to us, and we couldn't all fit um, with the, in the rangers' vehicles because they have so much gear and stuff. So the ATVs came probably another 10, 15 minutes later, and were able to get us back, which was another 15 minute ride and then we had to get into another car that took us to the trailhead that we started out so first thing it was amazing to see like they have the stuff to respond to emergencies they were able to find us so easily so did you expect that oh, i thought i thought mac was screwed <laughs> yeah we were both just kind of had this like trying to stay calm but had this like panic look on our face kind of like some this like this is not going to end well so we rushed him as quickly as we could to the emergency vet and initially this the anti-venom is extremely expensive also was not expecting that this kind of made me think of possibly getting pet insurance if you have pet insurance let me know if you think it's worth it in the comments below um because yeah, this is a hefty vet bill, but they called us first thing this morning at seven o'clock, which is hence all of this. We are rushing to, well not rushing now, but we're driving to go pick him up. Apparently he's been responding really well to the pain medicine and the anti-venom, which was like the biggest relief. They told us he might need multiple vials of anti-venom, but what are you gonna do? You have no other option. We, we're not just gonna let something happen to him. 
So we're going to pick him up. Hopefully he doesn't have any long-term tissue damage or nerve damage because it did happen right on his face and it can, what, eat your skin? Yeah, you can get like necrosis. Um, that's like the biggest thing with the copperheads. The copperheads don't have a neurotoxic on them. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt them as bad, but you can still get tissue damage around the bite area. Yeah. And that if it goes untreated. Yeah, so hopefully now that he's treated, it'll heal up nicely. I heard that it could take a couple weeks. It really depends on how much venom, the type of dog. It really helped him out that he's larger. If he was super small like he was when he was a puppy, it's definitely more likely to be fatal versus everything we've read. And it's crazy. We saw three copperheads yeah. on the trail yesterday, all on the same mountain which was kind of odd. Did you notice that? They were all, all... Yeah, I mean, because they probably like the sunlight there. Yeah. So, and they were all right off the trail. And they usually don't attack from everything we've read and just know. Luckily, Andy knew a lot about snakes. He knew it was a copperhead right away. Um, and all of that, like, he knew all of them were copperheads. And so did my dad. So that was helpful to know. Because um, I would have been like, I would have had no clue. I would have been pulling out Google. Um, but the forest ranger did like verify that it was a copperhead. So we're pulling in now. I'm gonna pick him up. I'm so excited to see him and glad that he's doing really well. Oh my good boy. Are you my good boy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mac, see the face. Mac. I think the pain meds Mac, are Mac. really hitting. Let's see up. your face. No. Oh yeah, he's still a little swole. Yeah, this whole side. It's okay, I'm not gonna touch it. It's okay. <laughs> he was not about to have me touch his face. Mm -hmm. You okay, Bob? You look so tired. <laughs> you look so tired. It's been a rough day, huh? A rough 24 hours. I guess if we learned anything, if this ever happens to you, definitely react quickly, I guess. Know that you can call the park rangers. They'll definitely help you. I've never seen him. He's usually calm in the car, but he is just zoned out. So yeah, definitely get him to the vet as soon as possible. And I think what really helped him, honestly, is the same guys who helped us also had a Benadryl. That was like the one thing I did not pack that will be in my pack for now on. I had pretty much every kind of other medicine, ibuprofen, Excedrin. I guess they did have like an Allegra, but not a Benadryl. Um, and I think that helped That's a his- That's out there. <laughs> yeah, Andy agrees. It helped his initial swelling so, so much, even from when he first got bit to we got him so we were able to get him to the vet so that really, helped him a lot i really think squeezing the venom out helped out a lot too that's yeah. what they're all saying we're so glad he is back we'll have to do our hiking trip another time don't know if we would bring him in the future i mean there is other dogs on it i feel like it's just they said it doesn't happen often even snake bites in general when we were talking to the park rangers so would you bring him back if we win again on a very tight leash. Yeah. We are home. Mac has been resting for a couple hours. You look like you're ready to play. He gets like all excited and then he'll like fall asleep. He just got his next dose of pain medicine. So he's probably gonna fall asleep again. But this is like the most inactive we have seen him. Well, busy day cleaning, still have more laundry to do, but I think I'm gonna call it a day here for today's vlog. I am just mentally done for today. But that's gonna be it for today's vlog and we'll see you guys next time.